Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed part one of this two-part series, and if you missed it, I will have the link for it at the end of this video, so you can click right on through. But in part two here in this video, we're going to discuss the key transits, the important dates coming up, and we'll end off with a spiritual homework assignment. All right, so let's talk about some key transits, and let's start off with the nodes. We've got the north node in Taurus and the south node in Scorpio since late 2021. I talked more about it in my December uh, video, my December astrology video, so if you haven't seen it, check it out. Uh, might have the link for the video at the very end of this one, so you can just click on through. So the North Node is about embracing necessary structures in your life, structures that are necessary for your financial well-being, for your welfare. And the South Node in Scorpio is about you releasing trauma, releasing what's old, releasing debts, releasing things having to do with other people's money, right? <laughs> Um, also, you know, it's, it has a lot to do with death and endings. So I, I'm sorry to say, you know, I don't mean to sound extreme and over the top here, but all things considered, you know, if there were a depopulation program going on, if there was a calling going on, um, you know, to make, to thin out the herd down to a more manageable number, um, well, this would be the time for that to happen, right? Um, and by the way, those of you who are like, oh my gosh, they would never, you, you, you need to not be so naive. Look at history. There has been a history of people who are very in their shadow side and engaged in what we know of as democide, death by government, killing off thousands, if not millions of people, okay? And frankly, you know, arguably, it's already been going on in this country, but we just don't recognize it as such. You know, if you want to look at abortion, how uh, in, in America, since, you know, it's become legalized, we're looking at an entire generation of humans who have been killed off, okay? Um, and we look at different agendas um, that, you know, without getting too political, but we we get agendas, women's movement, um, the LGBT, LGBT, LGBT uh, agenda that um, arguably have been artificially created through, you know, deep pockets who are trying to engage in social engineering to get people to start thinking, oh, I don't want to have kids and I don't need to have kids. Um, or, you know, if I'm going to have kids, I'll just abort them, you know, this type of thing, which is bringing the population effectively down to a zero population growth in the United States. So there have been some other programs, more or less, that result in this. I know it's controversial what I'm saying, but look at the facts. You know, if you strip away the emotion of, of it and personal bias, you look at the numbers and the facts and the outcome. Let's move on to Saturn and Aquarius, which is still going to be squaring Uranus and Taurus um, this year. We went through three of those major events. The impact is still here in 2022, and the energy is arguably going to be the strongest September, October, November of 2022. So, um, by the way, this is more fixed energy. We have the right the nodes in in Taurus and Scorpio both fixed, and then you look at Saturn and Aquarius squaring Uranus and Taurus more fixed energy. So this is going to uh, bring a, a, a battle to find liberation from restrictions. And it's that's a continuation of 2021. I think with all the fixed energy, people are starting to really get in their positions and almost be unmovable. Like, right, what's going on with some people is just like, nope, this is what I believe. This is what I'm doing, especially like the authorities. I think that they're going to be relentless, but there's fixed energy within the people as well that um, particularly the people that are awake and they know what, what the real story is and what's really going on here, um, immovable. Like the longer this goes on, the more we dig our, our heels in, you know, and say, no, you're, I will not comply. And we just fortify ourselves better through associations. But um, this is the energy is pushing people to break free of the restrictions um, and really look at what is needed versus what's not needed. Um, 
And so when, by the way, both of these planets, Saturn and Uranus, are at 18 degrees, beware of this during um, September 17th through October 24th. When they first goes in to this, when it gets into this 18 degrees, 19 degrees, um, arguably 18 degrees is probably one of the, some say the worst degree possible in astrology. They call it a Virgo degree, again, having to do with healthcare. Um, and it can represent severe health issues that need to be remedied. It can also represent caring for the less fortunate um, and being of service to something greater than yourself. But that 18 degrees, some will call it a very evil degree, um, 22 degrees deadly, okay? So um, there, are, there are some astrologers that say that when these two planets are within those degrees, 18 to 22 degrees, it signals a world event, a major shakeup on a mass global level. So uh, I am definitely going to caution y'all, you know, I, right, like I said, the, the energy of Saturn squaring Uranus all throughout the year, but really the ugliest September 17th through October 24th when it gets into these, these nasty degrees, okay? Um, and when that happens... What's going on around the same time is just a shit ton of retrogrades. Um, like in October, there's seven planets that are going to be retrograde, plus a solar eclipse in Scorpio. Oof. It's just a lot, a lot of instability and a lot of, no, I don't want to be moved. Yeah, you're going to move. You know, this is kind of the vibe that I'm getting out of this energy. And, and even think, you know, a month prior to this, um, in September, right, there will be six planets retrograde. So there's this buildup, this buildup towards uh, those ends. And even a month after this time frame of October, right, in November, five planets retrograde, so plus the lunar eclipse in Taurus. So big release, big release coming up by November. Uh, watch out. I think the fall is going to be spicy to say the least, buckle up for that. Um, and, and what is that, what will that look like? I think that because of the Aquarian Uranian energy that I mentioned earlier, it is likely gonna have to do with tech, maybe big tech, maybe cryptocurrency, right? Electricity, it's very disruptive energy, uh, very unpredictable energy. Some people are saying on a more benign level, oh, well, we might have uh, new energy uh, being explored or free energy or renewable energy. Um, there might be continued discussions from the government about offering, you know, this high speed Internet service to lower income people. You know, that's a very nice way of, you know, to me, that's the most benign expression of this energy. I, I'm actually concerned uh, about the crypto sphere, I'm concerned about big tech, and um, I am concerned about fake power outages, things like that, okay, so just be aware. Um, it, definitely, before you get into the fall, make sure that, you know, you have, you have your data backed up, um, that you have everything organized for easy access, um, you know, any kind of tangible paperwork that you have, right? Um, if you've got crypto, make sure you have it on a hard wallet um, by that time because there could definitely be a lot of instability with this energy during the fall. And some of that instability may spill over into your income, your resources uh, for revenue. Um, and whatever is going on during this time, it is pushing you to reevaluate what you value and realize what's necessary and what's not. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, we have Jupiter and Pisces till May, right? It's like the first half of the year. Um, and then Jupiter will go back into Pisces um, October 28th through December 20th. So this is gonna be bring a lot of good luck, growth, fortune, expansion in the spiritual realm, you know, right? Could be a spiritual awakening, a come to Jesus moment for some people. And I'm not necessarily saying that they're coming to Jesus, oh, they might be, you know, but it's, 
metaphorically speaking, um, they, they have a come to Jesus moment. I have sinned. I have made a mistake here. I repent of the error of my ways, right? So um, at the same time, some people who, you know, are being affirmed or confirmed in their beliefs are really getting a boost to their faith. Um, and I think, like I said, overall, more compassionate can caring energy because of this Jupiter and Pisces. Um, I think overall humanity is hopefully, God willing, going to have a higher regard for the things of the spirit. And I think people during this time are going to be a lot more intuitively guided, a lot more. Um, by the way, if you're a light worker, great for having your psychic abilities boosted during this time. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about this energy. If you've got a lot of Pisces placements, as do I, I think it's really going to be super good for us. Or like my daughter is a Pisces son. Really good energy. But also just collectively, I'm happy to see humanity uh, get a break and, and get some blessing here with this energy because... I personally feel like a lot of people have been led astray because they've not been listening to their intuition. Well, it's going to be harder to ignore your intuition during the first five months of this year. And really, as we speak, going into this year, you know, very hard um, to ignore those intuitive promptings of the spirit. And that's a really good thing in my book because it'll save you from a lot, right? Um there is also with this energy more of uh, humanity dealing with endings. So yet again, we see another layer here of kind of this uh, south node in Scorpio energy releasing endings, okay? Releasing what's old or dead or toxic, okay? Um, but with this energy, it's more of a gentler detaching, disconnecting from yeah, maybe the old slave system, okay? The old monetary system for some, just saying. Um, the 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 three D and getting into the five D ascending beyond this prison planet matrix, right? Um, but like I said before, the caution here with this energy is escapism through drugs, alcohol, whatever, um, and deciding that they're just going to Neptune out of reality because they can't they can't deal with it, they can't face it. Now after May. Jupiter is going to go into Aries, and I'm excited about this energy as well, but for different reasons, okay? So May through October, we've got Jupiter in Aries, and then December 20th, very end of this year, into May of next year, 2023, um, we'll have Jupiter in Aries again, okay? So basically last half of this year, Jupiter in Aries, um, while we are in the buildup of a lot of retrograde energy, so... Um, be aware of timing issues because Aries is very me now, me, 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 you know, <laughs> this kind of reminds me of Donkey in Shrek, me, pick me, oh, pick me, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but when you're having that kind of energy, while things are in retrograde, you know, there might be timing issues or being you individually being out of sync. Um, or you're not quite getting the cooperation. Things haven't just yet lined up for you, uh, but maybe getting a little bit impatient about it. So on the positive, I see that a lot of us will be getting into, a, you know, energies having to do with new beginnings, whereas the six months prior, right, it was endings in Pisces. Now we're getting into new beginnings, second half of the year, um, new starts. Again, bringing another boost of confidence, similarly to, you know, Jupiter and Pisces, um, but I think that, uh, right, that's more of a dreamy faith building type. This is more of a I'm not second guessing myself anymore type of confidence boost. And, you know, my concern, however, is this is going to this is going to feed the protesting, the, the rebellious energy. It's really going to feed into that and uh, really like give add the angst and the confidence to really put your angst out there Um in a way where people are fighting more for their freedom. So I see a lot of this um, inner authority rising up in people because of this energy and um, taking more initiative, um, having more of a pioneering spirit where maybe in the past they'd be like, oh, I don't know about that. That's uncharted territory. They'd be like, oh, the hell with that. We're getting out of here. 
<laughs> you know, this willing to take risks that you would not have taken before that you maybe would have thought, well, that's foolish. I don't know about that. You might even be, we might collectively be getting to a place of, you know, point of no return where it's like, I've got nothing left to lose or what do I have to lose? You know, that kind of energy. So I, I kind of like this. I really like seeing this energy because I feel, again, I'm going to say something controversial here. Arguably, there's been a lot of feminization and emasculation going on of particularly males who, you know, yeah, some of y'all are going to get mad at me for saying this, but, you know, if you're walking in your masculine energy, if you are in divine masculine energy, um, you know, these are our warriors. These are our defenders, our protectors, our providers. But what's happened with all the social engineering is that um, they've been neutered. I I'm sorry to say, we've seen the neutering of our our men, okay? And um, even, you know, the young men who would be of, in, in generations past, prime age for defending, right? Um, We're seeing what's happening instead is uh, extended adolescence where, you know, this has been going on for a long time. And so what I'm excited about is that with Jupiter and Aries, and I don't think that's going to be in vogue anymore. All this gender dysphoria that's been politically correct and all of that, where in my opinion, again, some of y'all are going to dislike, unsubscribe for me saying this, very controversial, but, you know, to me, people who reject their own gender, it is self-hate, okay? They're not, they're rejecting themselves, all right? Who they authentically are. I'm being really controversial here, but I'm just going to say, I think this wokeism BS that we've been getting for how many years now? Um, over with, over with. People are done with the wokeism. They're done with it, um, with these companies, these these corporate conglomerates, with the government getting woke, with you name it, fill in the blank. It, it, people are starting to wake up and recognize it as cultural Marxism. And this energy with Jupiter and Aries is going to assist with that, okay? Um, right, you remember you remember the, the videos last year that were put out, uh, I forget by who, where they're introducing, hi, I'm a white female with brown hair and I identify as she, her. Like, what the heck is going on with people? What happened to, you know, Martin Luther King saying, let's, let's, uh, judge people by the content of their character you know this identity politics stuff that's been dividing us and distracting us from the real values north node and taurus um we got to get back to it and yeah the north node and definitely jupiter and aries i think is going to assist with that okay so as i mentioned before we have a lot of eclipses uh coming up with the the nodes shifting this is bringing a lot of uh, eclipses in taurus and Scorpio fixed energies. So these are a lot about money issues, values, finances, possessions, my money in Taurus versus your money in Scorpio. Um, and this kind of, uh, <laughs> these, these storylines that we've been seeing in the news with like AOC and her little tax the rich dress, which seems so in vogue, right? Um, I think people are waking up to the fact that, um, you know, this idea that you're going to vote for other people to pay for the taxes is a lie. It's a scam. We all end up paying for it. Uh, we all do. And so um, these eclipses are bringing these money issues, forcing change with these money issues and these values. And um, particularly, you know, if you're like me and you're a fixed sign or you have more, you know, like my, I've got a fixed sign in my sun placement and my rising, you know, you got a lot of fixed energy in your chart, sweet Jesus. <laughs> we are going to have to be more flexible um, this year, okay? Um, we have to be able to pivot and be agile and adjust to these changes that are being forced on us. Eclipses have a way of like, yeah, sorry, that's out of your life now. Sorry, we're not doing that. Here's the new program, ready or not. You know, that's, <laughs> and that's what it's happening, you know, concerning values and 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 finances. So uh, on the eclipses, just as a side note, really um, important dates on those. April 30th, solar eclipse in Taurus. May 16th, lunar eclipse in Scorpio, while Mercury is retrograde, Uranus and Venus is also going to be in Taurus, so May, a lot of fixed stubborn energy, so again, more of this, like, 
try to be flexible in May, all right? October 25th, we've got a solar eclipse in Scorpio in a very early degree, so it could be very emotionally potent energy. Um, but the positive use of that is to transform something, but again, emotionally intense, pushing you to change something. Um, definitely, you know, with seven planets during that time being retrograde, it will be the most retrograde month of the year, by the way, in, in that, during that solar eclipse in October. So, uh, just be ready, be ready to pivot in October. And then November 8th, the lunar eclipse in Taurus, there will be five planets retrograde at that time with Mars retrograde in Gemini as well. So if you are a mutable sign, which is Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, Pisces, yes, um, December could, I'm sorry, November could be a time where you feel like you've lost your sense of direction. Um, and maybe that's because you've been too flexible, too adaptable to things that you needed to hold your ground on. So be mindful of that. Be cognizant of that. And then finally, we've got Mercury retrograde happening in the Earth signs all this year. So, right, the Earth signs are about the tangible, the material realm, the 3D, the earthly, right, the, the sensory. Um, so it's just adding another layer of energy to us with the nodes, having to look at values that are uh, changing and during a Mercury retrograde, what we're thinking back, we're looking back, we're revising, reanalyzing, readjusting. And in our signs, it's going to be about reality, the day to day. In terms of retrogrades this month, this year, the best, lightest months for that will be February, March, April, and March there's not going to be any retrograde. So, um, you know, if you really want to get going with something, I'd say March is a really good time to, um, if you want to launch something or like launch a product or a service, or you want to start a new business, uh, probably, you know, March is a good time or traveling, good time for that, or publishing, really good time for that. The worst, heaviest retrograde energies of the year will be October, November, December, October being the worst with seven planets retrograde. Okay, getting into important dates. One of the most talked about dates <laughs> in the astrological community right now is in February um, with the United States having its Pluto return with a Neptune opposition, okay? The Pluto return, from what I understand, it occurs every 250 years. Um, the opposition every 165 years. So um, some are calling this the American Revolution 2.0, and that's because a lot of the energies that were present in 1776, when this country was founded, will be present again in February. Very big stuff huge, huge turning point for this nation. So um, this, by the way, is uh, this this event in February is occurring as the Chinese Communist Party is hosting the Winter Olympics in Beijing, and they are launching their digital yuan. And they are celebrating the Chinese New Year. So um, what's happening in America during this time? Well, we've got the old ec uh, economic guard trying to stop crypto upstarts. And their goal is digital currency, theirs, not ours, not the people's, right? So that they can maintain control. And so um, I'm going to say that I'm going to talk more about that in other videos having to do with Bitcoin for those of you who are interested in crypto. But, um, right, I can't help but mention it because in the context of this this energy, this Pluto return opposing Neptune, <laughs> right, everything else I said with the fixed energies, the Earth energies, the, um, the nodes in houses having to do with money, um, and specifically other people's money in that south node, um, you know, it, it will, I believe, have a financial impact. And again, if you go back to the first 
Revolutionary War in 1776, well, that's what was going on. There was a revolt against the establishment over taxation. And by the way, a very Scorpionic taxes, releasing it, letting go, right? The, the population there pushed back against the ruling class elite and said, no, we are not going to pay those taxes. We will not have this. We are not going to be beholden to, at that time, it was the British, the monarchy. Um, but but who, who have the oligarchs become here in the United States? Who is the ruling class elite, right? Think about it. We have come into a time in America where we are no longer being governed by the elected. We get, we're being governed by people who are unelected, unaccountable bureaucrats, right? Like think about Fauci, completely, nobody uh, voted for him. How do they get him out? How did they get him in? You know, no accountability at all. Even when brought to Congress and caught in lies, n nothing, and the people have had it. Um, and, and again, going back to this Revolutionary War energy, this is what was going on. And the people, the early, the first Americans here were like, um, yeah, no, we're not having this. We're not going to be ruled by these people who are unaccountable and we're not elected. And we're back at the same thing again. And so, yes, if history is any teacher, if astrology is any guide, well, I, I think they're going to get booted out. Okay, there's going to be some booting going on. Okay, so, you know, it's going to be intense for people around the world and not just in the U.S., right? Because many people who don't live in the United States um, will say, you know, what goes on, what happens in the U.S. happens to the rest of the world. It's a domino effect, right? If we lose our freedom, so goes the rest of the world. Um, and so um, we are collectively um, maybe reexamining the Constitution and... Uh, looking at restoring it and upholding it and returning to the basic precepts and principles of liberty, right? As we've got people like these big tech giants wielding more power than ever, again, unelected, unaccountable, but they can take a president off the platform. And then now we've got the new CEO there at Twitter saying, I don't think the First Amendment is that important. Well, Maybe the rest of us here do. Maybe we'll start passing laws so that if you don't think the First Amendment is important and you don't respect it, well, you can't offer services in our area, right? I talked about that earlier. So that's just a little possibility here. But I think that, that all eyes are going to be on the U.S. through these intense changes. And I think a lot of truths are going to be revealed and come out. Um, not just in February, but all throughout the year. And this Pluto return really in history marks... Also, death of political leaders, okay? Historically, um, when you, you look at astrological charts um, and you see a Pluto return um, like this, it can mark the death of a political leader. And so, yes, there has been a lot of speculation about whether or not Biden will continue to be the president of the United States in 2022 and you know there's right health issues cited there's uh, the low approval rating cited um and then of course you know we have the ongoing audits that have somehow been swept under the rug in recent months with all these other media distractions but will we see a resurfacing of right truths, secrets coming out with that node in Scorpio and this being one of many, like, oh, gee, this person, according to our audit, was not, mm, it's going to be spicy, okay, very spicy, grab your popcorn, right? Um, yeah, a lot of astrologers are saying they, they don't think, given this astrology, that, that Biden will continue uh, beyond 2022. He is a Scorpio, by the way. <laughs> it's really not helpful. Really not helpful, okay? <laughs> anyway, um, will the Republicans rise again? Well, um, I, I do think that there has been an awareness that a lot of people who identify as being with the left um, realize that the, the Democrat Party has become very far extreme left. It's not the Democratic Party that, you know, maybe you grew up with. Um, if you're an 80s kid like me or, you know, maybe your grandparents or whatever, like, 
it's changed. It's become radicalized. And I think that there's a lot of uh, Democrats who now have Biden buyer's remorse. Um, and they're, they're regretful. Does this mean they're going to switch to being Republican? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I will say that a lot of people who had identified as being Republican or conservative, um, they're having an awakenings as well, right, about rhinos, people who are Republican in name only. Why? Because progressives have infiltrated both parties. Progressives, a.k.a. socialists, right? Um, and so there is, again, I'm seeing a purging going on, and it's taking me back to the South Node in Scorpio of we got to purge uh, the um, the toxic elements within our own ranks, be they left or right, and get to the truth of what are your real alliances and allegiances beyond the surface of things. Let's look deeper, Scorpio, um, and get to the brass tacks of this. So um, can be a very difficult death rebirth cycle, absolutely um, ugly, but making way for new beginnings and healing, right? That, that revolutionary war was quite ugly. Um, people died, as we know, you know, um, by the way, I'm the descendant of a young Irish man who fought in the revolutionary war. So, um, and he was an indentured servant prior to fighting. So, um, my people have been here a long time on my father's side and my mother's, but definitely on my father's side even longer um, since around 1776. So, you know, we've got rev I've got revolutionaries in my bloodline. I've got fighters in my bloodline. So um, I think that people are going to realize that freedom is worth fighting for because, again, the energy is really pointing towards that. Um, by the way, given all this you know, February money stuff, right? If you do have crypto, just a side tip, um, try to consider, you know, putting putting your um, crypto on a hard wallet, um, which has its pros and cons. I'll talk about it in another video, but um, also maybe consider privacy coins that cannot be tracked or traced. Again, I'll talk more about it in a future video. But um, also be aware of, because um, I think that that, that opposition that I'm talking about, the Pluto return is like on the 19th or 20th of February. And then on the 22nd, this is crazy. Pluto is going to be at 22 degrees, right? Think about that. The second, uh, February, the second month of the year, 22, 2022, okay? And then Pluto at 22 degrees. Um, there is something very significant about this number two, um, two, is about resilience and having the ability to survive and wait things out. Uh, it also has a lot to do with relating and relationships. And relationships could be a lot of things. It could be not just about people, but your relationship with money, your relationship with yourself. Um, it can have to do with being cooperative and solving problems and making peace. It's a very feminine energy here that brings about grace and power. Think of, of the high priestess. That's the second uh, card in, in the major arcana, high priestess. So, right, she's reserved. She's holding back, but she knows. And what she knows is what makes her powerful. Her ability to hold on to information, powerful. So there's something around the 22nd having to do with privacy or things being held back, hidden. And unfortunately, what's, I think, nasty about this is during this time, we will have Lilith and Cancer, Black Moon, Lilith and Cancer, so opposing Venus, Mars, Pluto, and Vesta, all in Capricorn. So Cancer is a lot about nurturing and protecting, and it might have to do with the home, right? And opposing Venus, Mars, Pluto, Vesta, all in Capricorn, values, values, and what is giving sustenance? What is sustaining? There's some... Anger, frustration, push back here with those energies. Okay, in April, we will have Jupiter and Neptune conjunct in Pisces on the 12th. And this is a rare 12-year event, so it will be quite beneficial for you if you're a water sign or you have a lot of water sign placements in your natal chart. Uh, water signs being Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Um, uh, the downside of this energy is that it might bring about extreme weather conditions, which, you know, could be in this case, flooding, 
hurricanes, particularly Gulf Coast, Florida area. Um, on the positive, though, I think it will bring about some kind of spiritual awakening, and it's very unifying energy, where, again, people are being pushed to go for the highest good for all. In July, um, Mars, Uranus, and the North Node, this is spicy. Late July, these three planets are conjunct and squaring Saturn. Quite the shit show. <laughs> But I kind of touched on it earlier, so I don't want to repeat. And I think as we get further into the year, I'll revisit this subject again. Okay, so this is an energy that I talked about earlier in the video where um, we're looking at fall being kind of dicey, okay? And this particular energy has a lot to do with the direction uh, that people are going in quite aggressively, quite maybe unpredictably, randomly wanting change, yet getting some kind of difficulty possibly from the authorities or just on an individual level feeling like they can't go in the direction they want to go. Um, rough, rough energy, but, you know, we'll be talking about it more as we get into it in the year. And so, you know, in this year, uh, you know, we by the end of this year, some say we're going to be officially entering into the age of Aquarius when Pluto goes into Aquarius and Saturn moves into Pisces. So, that's, that's the direction we're headed in, the age of Aquarius. So, Okay, let me leave you off with a bit of a spiritual homework assignment to make the most of the energies this year. I want to encourage you yet again, um, if you are into crypto, uh, you know, get, get, get a hard wallet. I, I'm going to take my own advice, right? <laughs> and, um, you know, if you're not into crypto, really consider it. Consider watching some of the videos that I'm going to put out during Capricorn season, late December, early January on that. Consider, you know, Texas as a re really good place for you. Maybe if you wanted to do Bitcoin mining or if you don't know how to do Bitcoin mining, maybe maybe back somebody else up who's doing it. That would be really a powerful thing to ally yourself with this year as um, somebody who's doing Bitcoin money, maybe in Texas, or um, getting into digital currency, or if you're already into it, get the digital wallet, the hard wallet. Outside of digital currency, I want to encourage all to get into social currency, building up more social currency by plugging into your local community. I'm going to be doing that this year, you know, trying to forge um, a local meetup where I'm meeting with people who are politically and spiritually awake so that we can help one another. We can strengthen and support one another and network. And um, I think these, this is a very powerful way to um, bridge the gaps and, and get rid of all this isolation that people have been feeling by being not just um, quarantined, but doing so much online these days. Um, this is a good way to turn this around in 2022. Also, you know, land, my gosh, you know, if you have any land, consider developing it um, maybe with affordable housing and or, you know, agriculture um, or some of you, if you're able to do a co-op, like I knew a lady years ago didn't have a bunch of land, but she had a house in the suburbs and she connected with some uh, local farmers and um, ranchers that weren't too far off and created a local co-op where people could meet at her house in the driveway um, every Saturday morning and buy from these ranchers or, you know, these um, farmers. Um, obviously, they have a lot of, you know, farmers markets now, and that's a good thing. But, you know, something along those lines to go local, 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 and to try to make things more affordable and, again, network locally with people, um, but in a very tangible type of way. And finally, ask yourself, what can I do? We've got to retrain ourselves. Um, many of us have been trained to look at what we can't do, we can't do, what we don't have, what is not there, what is lacking. I'm always having to like correct myself on this, but if you get into a mindset of you, focus and set on what can I do? What can I do? Um, then you position yourself better and others better to, you know, weather financial storms. And I think that's what I really want to encourage all to do. I think that's what the energy of this year is encouraging all of us to do is to look at what can you do to, you know, position yourself and others better to be financially fit and weather these storms, no matter what's thrown your way. I hope this has helped and I hope you have a wonderful year and make sure that you stay tuned and you know, be on the lookout for the videos I have coming out on the um, 
astrology readings uh, for the zodiac signs. Also what I have coming out on Bitcoin for the year ahead in crypto. Till next time, be blessed.